you know, at Garden Time, we really try to bring you stuff that's, that's important to the yard, just, not just plants. And we have a real treat for you today with this book called The Truth About Organic Gardening by Dr. Jeff Gilman, who is, I'm fortunate enough to have standing right here beside me. Uh, when I was reading the book, one of the things that I really found interesting was your sense of balance and just looking at things and trying to get, get the consumer a real idea that just because something's organic, just because something's chemical, sometimes there's a better choice in the two than just going all organic or all chemical. And I found that really interesting. And you know, we pulled some stuff here together, Jeff, to talk about, to give some examples. So let's, let's chat about those. Sounds good, and you're exactly right. Sometimes an organic is the right choice, uh, sometimes it's not, but you've got to look at every compound, every chemical individually. And remember that organics are chemicals too. I thought I'd start off with this one, one you'll see quite a bit, copper fungicide. Uh -huh. Now, copper is completely organic, but when you start applying copper, what happens is that it builds up in your soil and actually makes your soil poisonous for future crops. So actually, copper, even though it's organic, isn't necessarily the best idea. The best idea. choice for it, yeah. Right, and to show you an insecticide, that uh, is organic but isn't necessarily the best choice. Here's rotenone. Hey, this stuff's implicated in uh, Parkinson's disease. Wow. Yeah, it sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that's <laughs> love in a bottle right there. <laughs> yeah, that's about what that is. So, so then, then the question becomes, what is a better choice? Yeah. Well, I've got a few right here. And I've actually got some organics. Dipel dust, which mm -hmm. is actually BT, or mm -hmm. Bacillus thuringiensis. Yeah. Great for caterpillars. Spinosad is a really new compound. We're just just seen it over the past few years. Great for thrips and also for um, borers, bagworms, and tent caterpillars. Great compound. And one more that I wanted to mention quickly is um, neem over here. You'll see a lot of neem. Mm -hmm. And neem is often sold as a fungicide insecticide. As a fungicide, it's actually kind of marginal. Um, but as an insecticide, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, you know, for uh, several years now, neem has been like a panacea for people. Yeah. And so if you know, you, we also, in the, I, I know in the retail industry, we want to sell stuff that works too, whether sure. it's chemical or organic. And so that's interesting because I've, I've really always thought that it was a great fungicide. And after reading your book and talking with you, there's other things that would do better. Yeah, exactly. And just to point out a couple for you, um, here's a synthetic. And I'm not, you know, synthetics can be okay. This one is, the active ingredient of this is chlorothalonil. Mm -hmm. Chlorothalonil works really well as long as you use, you know, care, it's a safe compound. You have to use care. Well, you know, we compound. always say on the show here that the label is the law. You still follow the label, exactly. whether it's organic or chemical. Absolutely. And one other, uh, also, this happens to be organic, oil and lime sulfur. Lime sulfur sprays can work really well. They have to be a little bit careful because they can burn your foliage, mm -hmm. but generally they work great. Well, I was really interested in, when I was chatting with you earlier about these two products because I would, I never got the concept until you said it, which is so logical that some of our organics are depletable. They can be gone. So chat about that for a minute. Sure, I'd love to. Actually, I mentioned that uh, before we started using synthetic nitrogen, we used nitrogen from guano in mm -hmm. Peru, and we used it up. And there was an organic that we basically got depleted, <laughs> right, just because we overused it. And we're doing something to a lesser extent nowadays with potassium fertilizers, such as this green sand, and to an even greater extent with phosphorus fertilizer, which is mined in Florida. And once it's gone, it's gone. It's once not it, going to come back. Exactly. Inter it's really interesting. And you know, the thing too is you, we can continue, as long as we're going to grow cottonseed, we'll have cottonseed meal. Right. We do have renewable organics, such as this cottonseed meal. A corn gluten meal is also a renewable mm -hmm. um, organic fertilizer, and that works great. Well, you, it certainly was a lot of information for me to take into and, and process. I really suggest, and this book, is, by the way, is put out by Timber Press, which is right here in the Portland area, which I'm really proud of. Uh, go to your bookstores and get it, and you know, find out some information for your own. Do a little research and you know, give him a shoot. I'm sure he has a website. Do you have a website people can uh, contact you on? www.tre.umn.edu. There you go. So you, know, you can go there and give him your questions. Jeff, always a pleasure. Thank you so very much. Thanks. Pleasure to be here.